Hey guys, welcome to another episode. In this one, we've got something a little bit differently. We're going to talk about other NFTs other than Top Shot, sporting NFTs, ones that I'm interested in and ones that I think you will too. We've got Matt Dumber's charity NFT, which is really interesting. We've got a new member charter NFT, which tracks athletes, which gives you early access to athletes from high school. We've got an update on LaMelo Ball's dynamic NFT. And we've got professional baseballer Evan Mendoza in to talk about his project, which he drew himself, Diamond Dogs. All that and more, let's get straight into it. It gets me out of bed in the morning. The opportunity that each day holds, people to stand up and do what's right. The outrage began with a video showing police arresting 46-year-old George Floyd in South Minneapolis last night. And make it known that you're not alone. We vow and promise to stand up for justice and fight for what is right. That's why, you know, I've taken such a stance. It started very, you know, organically. Seven past and present NHL players announcing the Hockey Diversity Alliance. So this is a big moment. It's um, the first time the entire Hockey Diversity Alliance is together on one platform. Our whole mission was just to eradicate racism for our game. I'm Matt Dumba from the Minnesota Wild. And this is my NFT. Let's talk about Etched, a new NFT marketplace specifically designed for the curation of NFT collections tied to a charitable organizations and individuals. The mission for Etched is to use NFTs and amplify the, their power for philanthropic causes that make the world better, right? Very interesting from the start. The first NFT is the HDA collection, which was created in collaboration with Matt Dumba from the Minnesota Wild and was inspired by his journey. The Hockey Diversity Alliance's goal is to eradicate systematic racism and intolerance in hockey, and NFT funds will be used to pursue that mission. This artwork is a digital embodiment of the formation of the HDA. It captures a, a defining moment that changed the world for better. The image is a nod to like the fabled Sword and Stone story, um, symbolizes that anyone can have a great effect and change and achieve what was once considered impossible. Owning the HDA NFT is also a gateway into a deeper participation participation and influence on the organization and holders will be able to sit in on board meetings vote on where the nft sale proceeds go there's giveaways like merch and sports memorabilia as well as events all sorts of things happening at the very least i urge you to just sort of research this one it's minting right now so it's available at 0.08 eth this is one of the best cases i've seen where the purpose behind the mint is solely to use nfts for good so at the very least i urge you just to have a look at it and research it and watch the video which i featured a little bit here as well on the website for etched i'm also giving one of these away so let me know in the the comments what you like about etched just to prove that you've gone to the website and had a look at it and i'll pick one of the random commenters from either this video or two videos ago to win that nft as well so thank you to Etched for giving that one away. I got at Auctions, uh, who we had on the show previously, the guys that brought you the Pistons NFT we spoke to on this channel. The owners have a chartered membership NFTs that have exclusive right to buy follow-on or event NFTs issued by the athlete for their nominants. The NF event NFTs will be issued when great things happen and with no less than six events per year. These NFTs allow you pretty much to have um, invest in early prospects before they go pro. So check out their range of athletes on their website. Link is in the description below. This is Mikey Williams, who's a young prospect. He's only 17, and he was featured on ESPN on Jalen and Jacoby just recently, and you've got the tweet here from Own the Moment. So that was pretty epic, so it's getting some traction as well. So worth checking out. Remember um, LaMelo Ball's NFT, the Dynamic NFT? Well, Ethercars, who have just delivered the first stats on-chain NFT technology for LaMelo's collectibles. All of his real game stats are automatically integrated onto the blockchain in real time and can be seen on OpenSea. So Ethercards we had on the show, they're developing a platform for people to launch their NFTs and they also developed Lamello's NFT itself. This is Lamello's NFT on OpenSea and you can see now you got the stats and these are the points from his games, the first two games of the season. You see he's got 31 and 17 here. You've also got all the steals and assists. Different NFTs have different amounts of stats on them depending on which tier people brought in but these are available on OpenSea. This one obviously is like the most expensive one but it was the top one I clicked on but there are lots of others there as well so just interesting that this dynamic NFT has taken effect um, 
and changing over the time. And if he wins more awards or anything like that, like he won Rookie of the Year, the NFT can theoretically change with it as well. Now we're going to talk with Evan Mendoza, who drew and developed his own NFT called Diamond Dogs. And he's also doing a special giveaway for you guys at the end as well. So it's a double whammy, this video. This is my chat with him. Enjoy. Evan, thanks for joining us, man. How are you doing? I'm doing well. How about you? Good, man. So for those that don't know you, um, quickly explain who you are, where you're from. My name is Evan Mendoza. I play baseball with the St. Louis Cardinals. I'm from Sarasota, Florida, and I'm releasing a new project called the Diamond Dogs. Awesome. So, I mean, the obvious question is, you're a professional sports person. Why have your own NFT? I've always really been a creative person. I remember from a young age, I think I might have been in th third grade, where my mom enrolled me into a self-portrait art class. Really enjoyed that. Um, I remember in uh, even high school, I was learning some um, AutoCAD and architectural, even 3DS uh, programs. I really thought uh, 3D printing was awesome. So, uh, Oh, you were in 3DS gravitated. as well? Yeah, I've always been, you know, uh, in some some type of 3D space and some type of creative space. Learned those pro programs by myself and um, always have loved After Effects, Photoshop, uh, anything really creative. Have you been into NFTs before deciding to do your own project? You must have had a foot in the door somehow. Yeah, so I, I had a good three three months stint at it uh, earlier this year. Which is year. like three years in NFT um, land. Yeah, it, it was good. It was uh, different than what I'm doing right now. I was doing one of one art pieces in uh, basically March and April, mostly a little bit of February. Um, but that, that time was mostly just one of one pieces on foundation. And, uh, I got introduced to the space, understood little key components such as gas and everything like that. And just understanding that it takes, um, you know, a little bit of an upfront investment to potentially, you know, have someone in, invest in your artwork. Why diamond dogs? So Diamond Dogs has a really awesome backstory. It is kind of long, but um, our team had a, a fun little saying that whenever we took an aggressive swing, even if we swung through it or fouled off the pitch, we would yell to the hitter, swing it, dog. Um, <laughs> and one time when I had a, you know, a, a bad couple of games, I uh, was just looking at a, a, a blank canvas and you know, I was just brainstorming. Came up with a dog because that that saying was kind of in the back of my head at the time, trying to find a, a word, a phrase that was going to be fitting and found the, you know, the word diamond because of, you know, diamond hands diamond in the hands. space is it just makes perfect sense to be able to mesh the two, especially with the baseball diamond. That's what it's called, um, you know, referring to the baseball field. And it, it's kind of a symbolism of uh, combining the two communities that I'm a part of both baseball and you know, the creative and NFT space. Yeah, that makes complete sense, actually. Um, so speaking of diamond hands, we often talk about utility in the NFT world and the NFT projects. Is that something that you've thought about, obviously, with this project? A hundred percent. So the, the two main real life utilities that I like to focus on are uh, within the, the traits of the dogs. Uh, number one, having a background. Uh, I created a... a there's a stadium here in the States in Baltimore, Maryland, which is where I was born for the Orioles. Uh, the name is Camden Yards at Oriole Park. Um, that's the, the background of the stadium. All the other dogs have a, a, a solid background, a solid color. There's one in particular, the stadium, though. That's going to give you access to a one-on-one -on -one stadium tour with me during the season. Uh, whether it's home or away, we'll, you know, we usually get to the ballpark fairly early. So we're able yeah. to just walk around the ballpark together, talk about whatever, whether that's NFTs, art, baseball, life in general, anything really. Yeah, uh, nice. The, the second one is uh, going to be a little bit more accessible to everyone. The stadium one's going to be very sought after and definitely very rare. Uh, the other one's going to mm -hmm. be a little bit more accessible, maybe like 50% um, are going to have this trait, basically a signature in the bottom right where um, that will give you access to a certain... Um, uh, website we haven't understood the infrastructure on how we're going to set it up but that's why um you know our season's going to be starting up in february of next year so we have some time to figure that part out but that's going to give you access to like will call tickets to you know bring uh you and some some family potentially to 
a, a baseball game uh, where I'm actually going to be playing there. So I think it's going to be cool to be able to come to a baseball game, see me, you know, go about my work, uh, go about my passion of, you know, playing baseball. You've got signed memorabilia. Um, you got a foundation uh, for cancer research in the roadmap. You've got um, five legacy players given away, and then you've got some ETH giveaways at the very end in your roadmap. Um, when's the key dates, I guess, for the mints? Like, how can people get involved? October 24th at 7 p.m. is going to be whitelist. That's going to last two days. Uh, and then we're going to have public launch, which is going to be October 26th at 7 p.m. as well. Um, mint price is going to be 0 0.07 ETH. Uh, there's going to be 7,000 dogs and 200 are going to be used for uh, promotional and uh, it's going to be kept in the community wallet. Um, to be able to get whitelisted, you have to join the Discord. Uh, basically, just level up within the Discord to level four. Uh, honestly, it will take about two, three, four hours, nothing too serious. Um, and that's going to give you that access to, you know, uh, mint whenever you want to hopefully alleviate any of the gas wars. I'm trying my best to be able to put myself out there. And, you know, for other athletes to be able to see this project and potentially, you know, inspire them to, you know, go after their passions. That's one thing that I really, you know, am passionate is about is going after your passions. Um, for me, it's being creative, being artistic um, and showcasing that to the world. I've been very accepting of, you know, my passions lately. And I feel like in the sports world, sometimes even celebrities, people of some status, they feel like that one thing that they do defines them, whether it's acting, singing, uh, or playing even a sport. So I really think it's important to, you know, showcase your passions, not be afraid of it, and, you know, really tackle those uh, passions that you do have, um, you know, whatever it might be. Um, so hopefully, you know, I can, you know, almost be like a source of inspiration to other athletes and uh, make them feel comforting to, you know, do whatever they love. It feels like that you're also doing this the right way as well. So like I've observed so. um, for yeah. a few days before like doing this with you, like I've been in your Discord, you're in there, you're on Twitter, you're engaging, your face yeah. is on YouTube drawing the actual diamond dogs. Um, and the, the term comes up and I don't want to bring it up, but like, you know, you see sort of celebrities that potentially getting into NFTs because it's the thing yeah. to do, get into NFTs. Um, yeah. So I love that what you said about sort of, you know, doing it the right way, inspiring, maybe even yeah. paving the path and doing that's, it right. That's, that's definitely the frustrating part is when you see athletes and celebrities and even influence just, you know, um, curate uh, a certain project or just attach their name to it and don't really get involved at all. It's like, so you're telling me you like the profits of NFTs, uh, monetarily, yeah. but you don't necessarily understand the true value. And I think I've made more friends over the internet, like the past two months, I'd say, oh, that yeah. are actual genuine, like friends that care about like how 100%. I'm doing every single day. That's like in itself, like really awesome. My, my great friend over in LA, Matt, he, he owns a couple of wine or used to own a couple of wine restaurants and loves wine. And we were able to talk wine within like three Twitter DMs and he's a huge Dodgers fan. He loves baseball. He's good friends with Dave Roberts. And like, these are the connections that like I'll remember for a lifetime. Like I'll hopefully be able to fly out to LA, meet everyone in, in person. But like, those are the true like um, rewards within this space, within the NFT space. I'm sure it's very similar in the top, uh, top shot space is, you know, sometimes you get to have those connections to be able to network with the certain people and that's where like the true like almost utility is. Some projects don't have real life utility. Luckily, Diamond Dogs do. But um, you know, sometimes that's the real life utility is to be able to network with you know some some like like minded and forward thinking individuals. So the whitelist is today. As you're watching this video, you're also got a giveaway teed up for the community. Um, hit them with that. What have you got in store for them? Yeah, well, I'm going to be giving away a signed baseball from myself uh, attached with the handwritten note. Uh, all I'm really going to be asking from you guys is to head over to the Diamond Dogs Discord. Uh, you can either find the link uh, maybe in like the comments below in the description. Yep, I'll put it in or, the description. That's perfect. You can find the, the description. Uh, you can find the link to the Discord in the description. And all you have to do is head over there. Uh, say hi in the chat, number one. But number two, just join that Discord um giveaway thread and react to the emoji and then you're automatically entered 
Yeah, nice. Mate, thanks so much for spending time with me. I'm going to give you a fun question um, just because you're here and I like to mess with people sometimes. Yeah, Not all of these are good. If you were arrested right now, what would your friends assume it was for? Oh, that's a really good question. Jeez. Honestly, they, they probably would probably assume it, it, it wouldn't be any drug. It wouldn't be a DUI. It wouldn't be anything like that. They would probably be like, man, he messed up on his taxes real bad or something like that. <laughs> like <laughs> He messed up somehow. Like he's got his life figured out, but he probably messed up in one really big situation like uh, with taxes or something like that. I, I hope not. Um, I hate it stressful. every time a year it comes yeah. around tax time. It's just like, oh, nobody enjoys it. Nobody. How enjoys often it. I can know. I push this back? Exactly. I know now it's even going to get worse with, you know, the crypto scene in there. Yeah. And uh, I'm not really ready for that, but I am ready to hopefully <laughs> potentially uh, give back to, the, you know, first off, like my family um, to be able to um, provide for me, always have a roof over my head, always eight meals. Um, they really, um, you know, invested in me as a kid to be able to play baseball. And they definitely valued that as a kid to be able to, you know, drive to practices, uh, games, tournaments, whatever it might be. So I'm really excited to be able to give back to them and, uh, you know, put a smile on their face. What's the funniest thing that's happened to you on a baseball field? Probably after a strikeout, um, the catcher will usually throw it around the infield. Um, First, the catcher will throw it to the third baseman. So in spring training, actually this year, um, it, it was weird. Our, our stadium had a certain um, way that the shine of the sun reflected off of the seats. And for third base, like it was just a straight glare. So it was really, really tough to see, even if the ball was hit to you. Um, but anyway, the, you know, pitcher struck out the batter and threw it. Uh, to me and it kind of got lost in that uh, little area and I kind of had to start uh, glaring for it or glancing for it and it hit off like the tip of my glove because I kind of like did one of these and it went like that and just hit me in the head and then just like <laughs> dropped and this is like you know the simplest thing this is just catching it and throwing it the batter's <laughs> already out um, I don't really know how many people saw it but I was just like I didn't really see that ball really well yeah. so like I hope no one like thinks i can't catch the ball it's did other people know that the sun was in your eyes or did you just look probably, silly? no no probably nobody <laughs> knew that um that's the most frustrating thing you can't like convey that to anybody unless they're literally standing at third base but um yeah that was probably one of the more embarrassing things um tripping and falling while running like it, it unfortunately it just happens like like we're wearing spikes for a reason um it, it's tough to get a grip sometimes on the dirt um but yeah, I'd, I'd probably say that. That was probably most embarrassing. Yeah. Yeah, nice. All <laughs> right, man. Thanks for spending time with me and sharing yeah, the Diamond Dogs with me. I look forward to following um, how this all goes and um, how the minting goes and the utility and everything else yeah. for the community. Um, and I wish you best of luck for the drop, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited. I, I really don't know almost how this is going to go um, after launch and everything, but I know it's going to be the starting point of, you know, potentially almost like a, a new chapter in my life. So I'm, I'm hoping and wishing and praying for the best. And uh, I, I hope to, you know, success with your, your channel as well. Uh, we'll for sure stay in touch uh, to see how everything goes, but let me know if I can help in any way. Yeah, nice. We'll catch up again. Thanks for joining me, guys. That's it from me. Remember to let me know in the comments what you like about the Etched NFT and to enter the giveaway for the Diamond Dogs. Go to the Discord, find the giveaway channel, and enter. Go in the general chat also and let them know where you came from and let them know I sent you. Anyway, have a great day. I hope you got some value out of this video. If you did, please consider liking and or subscribing, and I'll see you in the next video. Have a great day. See ya.